My name is Adam Devenner. I'm from the University of Wollongong. I'm going to talk about blocks and Grand Central Dispatch. Okay, so um, what I'm going to cover, I'm just going to give a brief overview on blocks. You really need them to be able to use Grand Central Dispatch, so I'll go over that later. And then I'll give you a brief introduction on Grand Central Dispatch and a few of the cool things you can do with it. Um, so first of all, what is Grand Central Dispatch? It's Apple's technology for multi-threading. They went and written, wrote a uh, whole C, C API uh, to support multi-threading. It was released with Snow Leopard uh, and iOS 4. It doesn't support anything behind them, and they've been improving it since then. Um, so it's a low-level C API. There are uh, Objective-C wrappers around it, um, but Apple will recommend you use the C API. It's not very difficult to use. Um, it's actually open source. If you go to libdispatch.macOSforge.org, you can download the source code. There's a few forks uh, for Linux, Unix, and uh, for OpenBSD. Open and there's a couple of forks for Windows as well, but I'm told they're not very good. Um, and so the basic idea of Grand Central Dispatch is to shift the responsibility for managing threads over to the system. So if any of you have tried to do that before in C, it's not very nice. All right, so why would you want to use Grand Central Dispatch? So this is something, this is something we'll work on a bit later. So basically, there's just a web view in here. And when you press the load button, it loads this nice AUC web page in here. But that's all it does. It doesn't really give you any indication it's doing it. It just loads it. And a lot of the time, you'll do these things and it'll block the view. Especially on iOS, if you block the main thread, your user interaction stops completely. So if you try and touch the screen, that nothing happens. And on Mac OS, you'll get the spinning wheel. So why would you use it? You want to keep all of your work off the main thread, which is what you're given when you open up your application. Pretty much anything you do, unless you specify otherwise, will happen on the main thread. And whenever you're using the main thread, the UI can't update itself, which is why you want to keep the main thread responsive. OK, so before I go into Grand Central Dispatch, I'll just start with blocks. So uh, here's what I'm going to do with blocks. I'm just going to go over what is a block, uh, where would you use them, uh, how you can interact variables with blocks, and how you can use uh, scope. So for those of you familiar with C, this is a C function pointer. So you've got your type def. There's your return, return type, the name of the function, and your parameters list. So this is nearly exactly the same as a block. There's only one thing that's different. So it's this little carrot here. So all you have to do to create one is type def int carrot, the name of whatever it is you want to call it, and then your parameter list. And if you type if you type type def block in Xcode, it'll actually generate that and it'll give you the um, statements to put in for the argument list, which is very nice. Xcode autocomplete is great. So um, this is how you would use one. So we've got our block type. So we just create an instance of our block, so PB, and then in line you can initialize it. So caret then your parameter list. Now, that doesn't have to be arg, just because that's arg. You can call that whatever you want and use it, just like any other function. And then you declare the function within your yeah, parentheses. Um, notice that you don't actually declare the return value in here. If you don't declare the return value or it's wrong, the compiler will generate errors, and you'll either not compile or you'll get warnings. So the way to call it is the same as a C function. So your instance is PB. So you just call PB and you pass your parameter list. So inline blocks. You don't actually have to create a type def to use a block. 
So you can declare a block just like this. So the only difference between this and the previous one is there's no type def out in front of it. This has to be declared within a method. You can't do this uh, in global scope. Um, and then you initialize it the same way. The only difference is here, print block is the name of the instance now. And then you, you can also um, initialize them straight from the yeah, definition as well. And then you call them the same way. OK, so a bit on variables. Um, anything inside the enclosing scope of a block has read-only access within the block. So you can see here I've got this my string variable, which I've de declared in the function above it. You can then access that variable and then when it calls it. Now the compiler will do all the extra work to make sure that this doesn't get deallocated for you guys that know about reference counting. The my string variable, the reference count will go up one. And then when the block is finished, when the block is released from memory, then the reference will go down again. So you don't have to worry about that. The compiler manages that all for you. But say you wanted to change what that said. Say you wanted to change what the value of my string was. If you try to do it at the moment, uh, your compile will fail, and Xcode will generate lots of warnings. All you have to do is you stick the block identifier in front of your definition, just underscore, underscore block, and the compiler will do the extra work, and you can write to it and do whatever you please. So function arguments or method arguments. This is how you would create a method in Objective-C that takes a block as a uh, parameter. So you've got a void return type, and then you have an empty caret in brackets by itself, and then your parameter list. And then this is the name of the uh, parameter inside the function. So that would be your instance in your method. Um, if you've got a type def as well, um, you can just put the type def in there. So the print block before, I could just pass print block as the uh, function, as parameter type. And then to call that, we can create a block, initialize it, and then pass that through. Now this time we don't pass the brackets, it's just the instance. So it's just like a C pointer. And the other thing we can do is we can get rid of this instance and we can just put this block inside here, and it just makes the code nice and readable. Just like that. So some common uses of blocks. Completion is probably the most common use, outside of GCD, of course. Um, you also get comparison, enumeration, and grant center dispatch. Um, so I'll just do a quick demo. All right, so at the moment I have this view controller. I'll just demo what happens. So I showed you this before. It has a web view. You click load, and then it comes up. Now, over a slow internet connection, that's going to take a while. It's not going to tell you what's happening. So it doesn't do really do anything very special at the moment. So what we can do is, if I, can get, if I go into this header file now, Close that up, give myself a bit more room. So we see we've got this type def, type def block. So if I go ahead and hit enter, or you can hit tab, it gives me this nice way to create a block. So I'm going to create a void block. I'm going to call it web view completion. And it's going to have one argument. It's going to be a time 
I'm going to call it time taken. And then what I can do in here, I can go back into my implementation file. So I've got this load press button. Now what I want, want to happen when you press load, we're just going to start a timer. Actually, I'm going to put that into the uh, header file so it's global. And I'm just going to start the timer. Actually, sorry. It's not what I'm going to do. So that'll just set it up to be the current date. So the current date and time. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to create another property that has the uh, block inside it. So you can set that just like any other property within, uh, within anything that implements the class. What have I done wrong there? No, wrong one. And so what I want to do is I want this to finish. I want this to be called when the web is finished. So I'm just going to make this a UI web view delegate. I'll set ourselves with this delegate. And in web view did finish load. I'll call the completion. Now notice how with a property, you'll put the brackets to call the function outside the brackets. So sorry, the just like that. And you'll notice it's complaining at me because I haven't given a parameter. What I want to do is give it an estate I, since Hold on a second. Right, so that should work, even though it doesn't. Sorry? Oh, sorry, yeah, you're right. since now. Right, so that should give me the right time. And now this is complaining at me because the 
because I need to make this non-atomic. So now what I can do is I can go back into this view and I can set the block. So I have my web view and I want to set the web view completion block. And so that has a D time taking. And what I'll do is I'll show a UI alert view. that wrong too. Right. That's still not going to like me. Right. Okay, so now when this web view loads, you should get a nice completion, but I don't want to make a nice completion. I didn't show the alert view. I have that in my notes to show the alert view in capital letters in bold. Sorry for being a little bit unorganized. There you go. So it's coming up and it's telling me it took minus two seconds because I did the time interval the wrong way around. But that's all right. You guys get the point. So basically what's happening is I'm enabling this web view controller to pass some information down the tree without giving any access whatsoever to what, to what it's doing, which is one of the great things you can do with blocks. Right. So now I'll get on to Grand Central Dispatch. Okay, so I'm going to talk about queues, synchronous and asynchronous execution, delayed execution, one time execution, looping, and groups. So First of all, I just want to talk a little bit about a dispatch block. It's a special type of block. It was not really that special. It's just a block that has no arguments and no return value. Its terminology within Grand Central Dispatch is as a dispatch block, in case you guys hear that. Um, so it relies on capturing variables, as I showed you before. And you can declare it just like that. So you don't need to put uh, the parameter list with void in the middle. And then it obviously has no return in the statement. So dispatch queues. Dispatch queues are the, uh, it's a powerful tool for performing tasks. It lets you provide, um, it lets you execute blocks synchronously or asynchronously and provides pretty much all of the functionality you need to do nearly all of your tasks for Grand Central Dispatch. So they're FIFO, first in, first out. So when you add a block to the queue, it, the block on the top will be taken out first, and then the next block will be taken out, and then the next block will be taken out. So it's in strict FIFO order. Now that doesn't apply, always apply for asynchronous. 
they'll always be executed first, but they won't always finish first, depending on how you set up your queue. So they're atomically enqueued, which means that it's thread safe, which in multi-threading is a big win. Um, so the system sets up locks and all of that, if you guys understand what that means, so that you can only add one thing at a time and it waits, it blocks. Um, and they're automatically dequeued, which I was talking about passing most of the thread handling to the system. All you have to do is add it to the queue and the system decides when it's ready. So when it has the available resources, it does it as quickly as possible, obviously. Um, so yeah, and then obviously some queues have higher priority than others. So depending on what priority the queue is, some blocks will be uh, executed first. Okay, so this is a dispatch queue. Its type is dispatch underscore queue underscore T. Um, one thing you'll notice in Grand Central Dispatch is most of the data types end with underscore T. Um, it's just a convention that Apple decided to use. And then to create a queue, you use this dispatch queue create function. So you pass it a name. The convention is to use the reverse DNS naming scheme. Um, hopefully you'll just use whatever you used in your bundle ID for your app. So if my app is com.adam.gcd, then that's what I'd use. And then you use a dot with the queue name, so Q1. And then here, I've got dispatch queue serial. So this can either be serial or concurrent. So serial means that with FIFO, one block will be executed and taken off the stack, and the next block won't be executed until that one is finished. With concurrent queues, they'll just be all taken off and attempted to execute at the same time. So if you've got a multi-core processor, um, then it'll just try and execute them all at once. So here's an example of an actual dispatch. So the way to dispatch asynchronously is dispatch underscore async. You pass in your queue variable and then a dispatch block. Now the thing to note here is that after async will be logged after hello world. Now the reason for this is, especially on a single core processor, um, it can only execute one thing at a time. So it'll be executing whatever thread we're currently on, and it'll just add this to some other queue somewhere, whatever you've specified. And then when it's ready, it'll go into this queue, execute this block, and it'll come out in this order. Now, in very rare circumstances, you might have those two switched. So it's not a good idea to rely on that. All right, so there's a few other queues. So Dispatch get main queue, that will get you the main thread. Now that's very useful because on iOS, uh, anything done on UI kit needs to be done on the main thread, otherwise it crashes. Um, so that's something you need to be very careful about. There's also dispatch get current queue, which gets the current queue you're on. And then dispatch get global queue. Now the global queues are often very useful. Um, usually you can get away with just using global queues and not creating any of your own queues. Um, it depends what you need to use them for. The great thing about these global queues is you can set a priority. So there's a few hash defines in libdispatch. Uh, default, low, high, and background. And Basically, priority is just a long. So if you want, you can pass a long into it. For those of you who don't know, a long is just an integer that's very wide. Um, so default is 0, high is 2, low is minus 2, and background is the lowest possible number you can have in an integer. Um, you can pass any arbitrary number for priority, but you probably won't ever need to. Those should probably be all you'll ever need. And the flags parameter, in Apple's documentation, it actually says always pass zero. It's reserved for future use. So it's anyone's guess as to why they put it there. OK, so um, now synchronous execution. 
So it looks the same as before. Instead of async, it's just sync. Synchronous, obviously. So in this situation, hello world will be logged before, after async. Because whenever you call this, when it submits the block, it blocks the current function which means that it, can't, it won't execute until that's finished. So there's your order. Now that can be very useful if you're on a, um, a non-main thread and you need to update the UI, but you want to update for the UI, you want to wait for the update to finish before you can continue. So delayed in queuing. Sometimes you might want to wait a few seconds or a few minutes before you submit a block to a queue. So this is how you would do that. You um, create a delay in seconds, and then you have to create one of these dispatch time t variables, which is essentially an integer value measured in nanoseconds. And because no one likes measuring in nanoseconds, um, there's this n sec per sec it's a hash define that is however many sec milli nanoseconds are in a second. So you just multiply that. And it's relative to whatever the, you pass in the first one. So you can make it relative to another dispatch time. But usually, you'll just want to pass dispatch time now, because you want it to happen like two seconds into the future. And then you call dispatch after with your time variable. You queue, and then you block. Um, couple of things I'm going to say on that. Um, so basically what it's doing is it's calling a sleep for until that time. And then it calls a dispatch async method. Except the only difference is the sleep will not block what's currently executing. And the other thing is um, when you call dispatch after, after that two seconds, that's not when the block will be executed. The block will be executed when the system feels like it should be executed at some point after that two seconds. It's the same as dispatch async. It simply adds it to the queue and then the system decides when it wants to execute the function. Um, so that block of code can be a bit annoying to remember. Xcode will autocomplete that as well. If you type dispatch after, it generates all of that. Um, you can dispatch, you can pass dispatch time now as the um, dispatch time, but that would just be stupid. You should just call it dispatch async, so please don't ever do that. Um, and passing dispatch time forever is undefined. I'm not exactly sure what dispatch time forever does because I've never tried it, but I don't imagine it would do a great deal because dispatch time forever doesn't really define anything. Okay, so now we have one time execution. So basically what this will do is for the lifetime of your program, it will only ex execute what's submitted in there once ever. And that doesn't mean if you've got it in a NS object subclass that you create and then that gets deleted, if you recreate that function, that function won't get run again. So it's once for the entire lifetime of the program. The only way to get it to run again is to quit your program and start it up again, which can be very useful. So you create this dispatch once token, which is just a static variable. So it's global within whatever, um, whatever class. And then you just call dispatch once. That's the only parameter. And then a block. So that's not asynchronous. That blocks current execution. If you need to make anything in there asynchronous, you obviously put that dispatch async call inside there. Now, one place that that's very useful is for singletons. Now, if you don't know what a singleton is, a singleton is where you have an instance of a class which is shared throughout the whole program. So basically what you would do is, normally, you'd have a property somewhere or a static variable, which is an instance of a class, and you use an if statement to check whether it's initialized or not. That's not thread safe. This is. So we have a static, a static instance of the class, 
we call this, and then we return it. So inside our block, we're just simply initializing it, and that's all it does. So if you've got multiple classes trying to call this, this function at once to get the shared instance, and it hasn't been initialized yet, the first one that, that gets through to the uh, receiver will, will pass the um, initializing call, and the other ones will simply get blocked, and they'll wait until this is ready. And then they'll just all get the same instance of that class. Okay, so there is one design pattern that comes about using uh, GCD, and that's this call callback pattern. Now, this comes about because of UIKit not being able to be used on anything but the main thread. So basically, what you need to do is you need to show something that you're going to do, so an update, so show an activity meter or a progress meter or something like that. Then you dispatch onto another queue, onto a background queue to do some processing, so you're not blocking the main queue from... Uh, showing that activity indicator, still responding to touch events. Then you load your data, and then you dispatch back onto the main queue, and then you can update your progress meter or hide it, do whatever you want once you're done, and update the UI to show the user that stuff is actually happening. Because users don't like it when they just start tapping and it doesn't work. And actually, one thing I missed before, if, you, if you're on iOS, and you block the main thread for 10 seconds, your app will get killed by the operating system. Okay, so looping. Now, you guys should all be familiar with for loops. They're very simple. For into i equals zero. i is less than however many times you want to loop, i plus plus. Now, if you want to do that asynchronously, you could just put a few dispatch asyncs in the center. Do whatever you want with that. One of my favorite functions in Grand Central Dispatch is this dispatch apply. So basically, it gives you an asynchronous for loop. So you tell it how many times you want to loop, you give it a queue, and then this block. So it, it gives you one parameter. You can, I usually call it i or something else relevant, but I just like i because it translates from for loops. And then you do whatever in there. And the great thing about this is this blocks. So if you're doing this whole big method and you need to initialize a whole bunch of variables, but you want to do it asynchronously because it takes too, takes too long, once you get to here, it'll wait for all of them to do, all of them to finish, and then we'll continue execution. If you want it to do it asynchronously, it's really easy. You just put that whole block inside dispatch async. Um, just if you do do that, don't make this queue the same as the async queue. Otherwise, it'll only do one of them at a time. Now, dispatch groups are one. They're a very powerful thing in Grand Central Dispatch. Um, it allows you to track multiple queues, multiple execution, and track when they finish, when they start, and a whole bunch of other useful things. Um, a common use is when you're loading an application because you may have to load from many different resources such as a few files, you might need to download a couple of things from the internet, you might simply just need to load a bunch of things into RAM. That stuff all takes time. Um, so what you can do is you can submit all these blocks not only to a queue but to a group and so that group will track when you finish and then you can finish loading your application, you can present your UI. And of course, it's not restricted to a single queue. So you can add a whole bunch of queues if you want. So this is how you would create one. You just create a dispatch group by using dispatch group create. And then there's these dispatch group async functions. There's also dispatch group sync if you want as well. Um, and then you just pass the group and the queue and a block. And then you can call this dispatch group wait function and that will block your current thread of execution until this is all finished. And I've, you can see I've passed dispatch time forever now, so that will wait forever until all of these finish. You can, you can also pass those uh, dispatch time types that I was telling you about before, 
So it, can, it will wait till a certain time and then it will time out. So this is how you would do that. So what happens is, if you do do that, you want to check the return value. If it manages to complete all of the blocks, um, it'll pass zero. If it doesn't, it'll pass non-zero. It's up to Apple, whatever they decide to choose for that. Um, sometimes it's useful to pass dispatch time now as the timeout as well. If you, you've done a whole bunch of other things, it should be finished by now. So just pass dispatch time now. Um, and the other important thing to note is if it times out, everything that was in the group will be restored to its original state before anything was executed. Um, that's something that's uh, pointed out very clearly in Apple's documentation. Um, so you need, if you don't go back and re-execute anything, you need to go in and clear all the men the memory manually. All right, so now a demo. Mouse. Okay, so I have this view controller, and what happens is, when you press load, it loads something from the Twitter API, but it takes its time, and while it's happening, you can't really do anything. So what I'm doing there is I'm trying to scroll the list, but nothing happens. And you'll notice now that when it's loaded, it's now finally received the touch events, so now it's scrolled halfway down the list. That's because it's all being downloaded on the main thread. So what we're going to do is we're going to move it all off the main thread. So in this load pressed function, all I have to do dispatch async. I'm just going to use one of the global queues. Give it default priority, zero for flags, and then you give it a block. Now if you just hit enter there, it'll put your last parentheses in for you, your braces in. And then all I'm going to do is I'm going to copy all of this into this block. But there's one more thing I have to do. This text view is part of UIKit. So I have to put another dispatch async on the main queue. And now when I run that, after I put a semicolon on, So now, we can actually do something. The view moves around. You'll notice that the button isn't stuck as blue. And then the text loads. But from a user perspective, that's still really not good enough. What we want to do is we want to update the UI so something's actually happening. So I've got this activity indicator. I'm just going to start an activity indicator. And then back on our main thread when we're all finished, we're going to stop the activity indicator. So now when we load, we get this nice activity indicator telling us that we're actually doing something. And now we're done. Right, so dispatch apply is just as easy to use. So you can see here I've got this NS array, and it's just a bunch of URLs. 
I want to download this data from all of these into this other NSRA, which is empty. And then I've got a table view which is going to show us what's still downloading. So I'll just show you what it does at the moment. So it's just a table view. It's got a bunch of activity indicators. All right, so. so what we could do is we could use a for loop. And then we'll create an NS URL for each one of them. Uh, and then we'll use my downloader function to download. We'll give that into the data and then what we'll do is replace the object in data and then what we want to do is we want to update our table view so that those activity indicators stop spinning but this could take a while because now we've got to download five different websites. And the other thing you'll notice too, because we're still on the main thread, we're still processing, so none of these updates will actually happen until the last one is finished. And what I'll do is I'll just move the screen to the side so you can still see. Oh, there you go, it's done. Um, so yeah, all of them happen at the same time. So what we want to do is, we just create a dispatch queue. Use dispatch queue create, we'll give it a label. And we'll just pass it null. Now, you can pass null. That if you pass null, it'll default to a serial queue. But on second thought, that's not actually what I want, because I want all this stuff to execute at once. So I actually wanted to pass a concurrent queue. So that's just there. And then we'll just use dispatch apply. So you tell it how many iterations you want. So that's going to be the, amount, the number of URLs we've got. And then we'll give it the queue and then a block. Now, one really cool thing you can do is on these block functions, it doesn't always work. It works with most of the Apple functions. You can just hit return and it'll insert that It'll insert this block for you with these parameters. You just got to insert the parameter name. So I'll just give that I. And then all I have to do is go in and replace this code into there. And that will all work exactly as we want. So that's going to happen all asynchronously now. So it'll be a lot quicker than last time. Now, the other thing you might have noticed then, too, all of them still finished at the same time. The reason for that is we're still blocking the main thread. That's because dispatch apply blocks. So what we have to do is just wrap it in a dispatch async function. So we'll use the global queue this time because we don't want to use the same queue. Give it default priority. And then we'll just copy it in. 
And so now all of these should happen at different times. But they don't. Because I didn't put this back on the main queue. And now they all happen at different times. So it's all being executed concurrently and asynchronously. All right, so now I have one last demo. I just want to do a little bit on groups. So again, I've got a couple of things I want to download. But this time, I want to download one website, but then I want to download the Twitter API and do a little bit of parsing, because they download in JSON and I can pass that into an NS array. So first I'll switch my storyboards to my last controller. So we'll create another queue. Again, we'll make sure it's concurrent. So now we'll make two dispatch async blocks, two dispatch group async blocks. So first we'll create a group. Using dispatch group create. We'll pass our group in. We'll pass our queue in. Oops. And then we'll just insert code into our block. So we want to do the same thing. We want to create an NS URL. Want some data to download. And then we want to replace that object. Set index zero with data. And then we want to go back onto our main thread. and we want to update our table view. So then the second thing we want to do is we want to download some information from the Twitter API and pass it. So because this is going to take a fair bit longer, we'll just do this on the uh, global queue. And I think this is going to take a bit longer, so I'm going to give it high priority. Zero for flags. We'll still create our URL. Let me just copy that URL so I don't get it wrong. And then what we can do is we can create an object 
and using the NSJSON serialization built into Objective-C, we can just get an object, uh, what is it? JSON object with data, just pass zero and null for error. And that will just give us a JSON object, be it an NS array or a dictionary. And then we'll replace the object in our data array. And then we'll update our table view again. And then finally, what we'll do is we'll wait. And because we don't really care how long it takes, we'll just use dispatch time forever. And then when that happens, we'll just show a UI alert view. And we'll show it this time. So once again, you'll notice that they all happened at the same time. Dispatch group wait blocks. So once again, we need to wrap it in the async block. Put it on the global queue again. Put all that in there. And then we need to put the alert view back on the main thread because it's in UIKit. And so this time, one will happen first, and then the other, and we'll get our alert view. All done. All right, if you guys have any questions, um, I'll answer them now, otherwise uh, that'll be all. Um, so does anyone have any questions? Yes? Is it global queue per process or per machine? Uh, it's per application. Um, it's just convention. So there's no, there's no real um, purpose to it. I guess Apple just decided that it would be the most useful way to keep track. Um, I guess it's sort of easier for them to manage if, um, if uh, they're looking through logs trying to fight, work out bugs in the code. They can sort of see this bug happened in this queue in this particular application. It's easier in that sense. It's also easier in the sense of you're, you've got multiple applications on a single device that you're trying to manage and you're going through all these device logs looking through what queues are going wrong. From that sense, it's easier. But other than that, um, it's just convention. Um, the problem with UUIDs is, as you're probably aware, Apple are deprecating them. They don't like... Um, Okay. Well, it's it's arbitrary what you can put in there. It's just a um, a C string, so it's a char star. Um, so you can give it pretty much whenever, whatever you want. I mean, if it's going to be a million characters long, it's probably going to fail. But um, other than that, whatever you want. Um, anything else? Yep.
yes. Um, if you go into the Apple documentation for Grand Central Dispatch, um, for every uh, dispatch function, or for most of them, there's a dispatch function with an underscore f at the end, which accepts a function pointer. So dispatch asyncs uh, function would be dispatch async f. And there's one of those for, I think, all of them. Um, if no one else has any other questions. All right, if you guys want any other information, the Grand Central Dispatch reference on Apple's documentation is a little confusing. Um, if you can understand it, it's a really good tool to use. Um, otherwise, probably look to YouTube or Google um, to look for other tutorials on Grand Central Dispatch. There's a few good ones that come up in the top list when you search it on Google. Um, if anyone else has any, any other questions, you can come find me around the conference. I'll be here till the end. Um, so, yeah, and have a good conference, guys.